One of the last individuals to speak with Liam Payne has come forward to share alarming details about the singer's behavior just moments before he tragically fell to his death from a third-floor hotel room in Buenos Aires, Argentina, on Wednesday. The woman, identified as Rebecca, was staying at the Casas Palermo Hotel for a friend's wedding when she encountered the former One Direction band member in the hotel lobby. In a revealing interview with the Daily Mail, published on Friday, Rebecca recounted her unsettling interactions with Payne that left her deeply concerned. Rebecca described her first encounter with Payne, explaining that he was waiting by the elevator when she arrived at the hotel. She observed that he seemed eager for someone to recognize him, saying it was so clear he wanted someone to acknowledge him. There was something a bit desperate about him this initial impression set the stage for a series of bizarre and troubling encounters that would follow. At that moment, the hotel staff appeared to be on edge because Payne had not checked out of his room, despite it already being 4.30 p.m., and one of Rebecca's friends was supposed to occupy the suite. As Rebecca stood near the elevator with her friends, they recognized Payne but chose to respect his privacy, refraining from engaging with him about his celebrity status. However, as the elevator doors opened, Payne abruptly broke the silence, announcing, Yes, I'm Liam, in an exaggerated manner, seemingly trying to assert his identity. He then invited them to join him in the elevator, playfully adding, I love a cuddle, although Rebecca opted to wait for the next elevator. A few of her friends decided to ride up with him, engaging in casual conversation. During the elevator ride, Payne made comments about their nationality, exclaiming, Oh, you're Americans. I live in West Palm Beach. I know Americans. You guys are f-king crazy. You guys are f-king dangerous. His comments, combined with his erratic demeanor, contributed to a growing sense of unease among those present. Rebecca then observed an even more concerning behavior when Payne appeared to grab a woman who he was with and pretended to choke her lightly. This act, although not meant to cause harm, was unsettling enough that the others around them found it really disturbing. Following this encounter, Rebecca left the area for a short time but soon returned to the lobby, only to see Payne again, this time with his laptop in hand. She noticed that the laptop was set to an accessibility mode that spoke aloud the cursor's movements. Rebecca speculated that he might have been seeking attention by using this setting. As Payne opened his emails, he came across a message that visibly upset him, prompting him to shout, FK this ST mate, before violently slamming the laptop against the ground. The suddenness of his outburst left onlookers in shock, with Rebecca noting, it's a high-end hotel, and his behavior was so out of place people were just chilling. Continuing with her account, Rebecca described how there was an increasing level of chaos around pain as he displayed more erratic behavior. After the laptop incident, he returned to the elevator area, and a British man who appeared to be part of his entourage approached Rebecca to apologize for Payne's behavior. He explained he just gets so high sometimes which raised further concerns for Rebecca. She noted, I did wonder what these people with him were doing to help him, but maybe they had tried and failed the hotel staff who had been nervously observing Payne's antics, seemed increasingly worried, with one staff member seen on the phone, likely calling security or the police. As Rebecca reflected on Payne's state, she described him as having dilated pupils and exhibiting signs of disorientation and aggression. Although she had never used drugs herself, she speculated that his behavior mirrored what she imagined someone under the influence of cocaine might act like. He was behaving exactly as I'd imagined someone would on the drug, she stated, emphasizing her concern for his well-being. Rebecca's distress grew as Payne re-entered the lobby a third time. This time he was visibly struggling to stay on his feet. He walked in again and just tripped and fell flat on his face, sprawling across the floor. She recounted, adding that hotel staff rushed to help him back up and assist him into the elevator. It was during this moment that she captured the last photograph of him, showing Payne chatting with two women while a British companion held the elevator door open for them. Not long after Rebecca's last sighting of Payne, police arrived at the hotel. Initially, she and other onlookers believed the authorities were merely there to escort him out. However, as hotel staff began to run around in a panic, it quickly became clear that the situation was far more serious than anyone had anticipated. The atmosphere shifted dramatically as the gravity of the situation unfolded. Several of Rebecca's friends witnessed the tragic moment when Payne fell from his balcony into the hotel courtyard. It was awful, and at first they thought he might have just injured himself, she shared. However, as the reality set in, they saw his body being carried out on a stretcher, leading Rebecca to describe the entire scene as so horrible the shocking events of that day were etched in her memory, leaving her shaken and distressed by the sudden loss of someone she had briefly encountered. The heart-wrenching news of Liam Payne's death spread quickly, with reports indicating that he tragically lost his life after falling from his third-floor room at the Casar Palermo Hotel at the age of 31. 
According to preliminary autopsy findings from the National Criminal and Correctional Prosecutor's Office, he suffered multiple traumatic injuries, resulting in both internal and external bleeding. Emergency doctor Alberto Crescenti confirmed that Payne sustained a cranial fracture and suffered extremely serious injuries that led to his immediate death, noting that he was unable to be revived by first responders. Further investigation into the circumstances surrounding his death revealed that alcohol and controlled substances were found in his hotel room, which was reported to be in a state of disarray following the tragic incident. The presence of these substances only added to the somber narrative of Payne's final moments, highlighting the challenges he faced in his personal life. As details of this heartbreaking situation emerged, it served as a poignant reminder of the struggles many individuals confront, often hidden beneath the surface of fame and public perception. The community mourned the loss of a talented artist whose life ended too soon, reflecting on the fragility of life and the importance of support and understanding in the face of personal battles.